Good morning, dear friends. Once again, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, as we spend these few minutes with the Lord, listening to Him, and let us open our hearts and our ears, that we not only hear, but we will really listen to what God is saying and then live according to His uh, standard that we may be uh, found uh, not wanting anything. And God is faithful to keep us. And today's meditation is taken once again from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. And this is concerning prayer, the power of a prayer and the necessity of prayer. And let me read this passage for you. And pray in the Spirit, Apostle Paul says to the believers, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that I, whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly Make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Apostle Paul realized and knew how important it is for God's people to pray for one another. And he depended on the prayers of God's people. And not only the importance of it, but also the power and and the and uh, the, uh, the the influence that the prayer will have upon God's people, those who are especially engaged in ministry, declaring the gospel. Now, prayer is a privilege, and the power and the influence of uh, prayer is really enormous. Prayer brings us unto, into contact with God and opens the gate so that the river of God's blessings may flow uh, and uh, can flow into our hearts and lives. That is what prayer does. It opens the gate for God's blessing to flow into us. And prayer is like breathing. And this is in 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 uh, uh, this will keep us in in to keep us connected with God, and that is what is important. Prayer brings us into contact with the power of God, like uh, turning a switch on, and it lets the power of electricity flow into a bulb, and then it begins to glow. And that's what the prayer does. It is turning on a switch. And the heavenly power will flow into us. And we begin to shine for Jesus Christ. And so praying people really experience such confidence that they truly are the light of the world. In every circumstance in life, in every time of need, we are to utilize the privilege of prayer. We must do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the desire of God that each of his children commune with our Heavenly Father. For this purpose, he sent us the Holy Spirit. One of the Holy Spirit's task is to create in God's children a feeling of filial uh, love that causes them to know God as their father, a father in heaven. That's why you remember the, uh, the, the prayer that Jesus taught. He begins with our father in heaven. And so there is an intimacy between God and and us exist 
which makes it uh, easier for a believer to approach God with confidence. And we are not repeating uh, the words that Jesus taught, but the real meaning there is, on the basis of this relationship, as a children approaching to their own father with confidence and love. And uh, we must never forget that. And uh, the term Abba is um, Aramaic meaning father. Combining it with the Greek term for father, pater expresses the depth of intimacy, warmth and confidence enabling us to call out to God. And so when we call out to God, we use this phrase, Abba, Father. And uh, a loving child calling his father, this is the way, Abba, Father. And that is the intimacy, how close we are in our relationship with God. It is this closeness that uh, helps us to have that confidence uh, with which we come and approach our Heavenly Father. We don't approach Him with, uh, as a terror-stricken children fearing what the Father is going to do. No, Father. And uh, that intimacy helps us to experience the sweetness of His love and uh, the intimacy that he wants to express. Now, we want God, want, want God the Father, um, to fulfill our heart's desires. And uh, if God does not fulfill our heart's desire on time, according to our timing, then we get upset and we begin to have all kinds of questions about God. Now, how much, do you ever realize this, how much our Heavenly Father longs and desire for His children fulfill His Father's, uh, his, his Father's desire for His children to talk to Him. Do you realize, ever realize that? You know, we we usually exercise that one-way traffic in communication. And that means we just come at the time of prayer and we simply keep talking. And uh, placing before our Father all our needs. Without giving Him an opportunity or a chance to talk to us. He is delighted in listening to you. But at the same time, you also should open your ears to listen to what God is saying, how God is responding to your uh, request and your need. And this is very important too. And uh, this is His desire. He, our Heavenly Father actually longs to listen to your voice and uh, you talking to Him. As we believe though we may not hear audible voice from God listen every prayer that is offered sincerely and from our heart is heard in heaven and it is never lost the answer may not come immediately but the father keeps that prayer he has his way and he has his time to reply to send the answer. So leave the matter to God and keep thanking God that He has your prayers. And that is the way we, 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 must, we must treat our Heavenly Father. Once you talk to Him, He has your prayer, He heard it, He knows your need, and then leave it to Him to work out. And be quiet, be still until you begin to receive the answers. And this is the way uh, our prayer works because we are His children. And the second thing we want you to notice is the, uh, the role of the Holy Spirit. 
and the Holy Spirit gives us guidance concerning the substance of our prayer. Um, and uh, and and then he he puts you know in Romans chapter eight verse twenty six, it is uh, uh, put it in proper um, order. So let us let us look into it. Romans chapter eight. Verse 26. It says here, <clears throat> In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will now one of the principles of uh, praying to God and we can expect the answers is when you pray it according to God's will now, many times we don't know God's will and it is because we lack in understanding of, of what is uh, given us or taught us in God's word. That's why the knowledge of God's word is very important in effective prayer. And so those of you who really wants to touch the heart of God through your prayer, know his word. Uh, what is taught according to and then sometimes God understands our weakness and so the Holy Spirit is given to us to aid us to to help us to assist us to understand God's will and then add substance to our prayer we do not know what to pray for or even how to pray for but then the Holy Spirit takes charge and there are two, three things that um, we need to, uh, two things we need to remember. Number one, uh, we have two main intercessors. Christ intercedes for us. In heaven. Christ is where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And the Bible makes it very, very clear. It is a clear teaching that the present ministry of Jesus Christ is interceding for you and for me. Where? In heaven. So in heaven, we have someone interceding for us. And the Holy Spirit intercedes from within our hearts here on earth remember the holy spirit lives in us that's what the bible teaches us and so while jesus christ intercedes for us to god the father in heaven here on earth the holy spirit who lives in us will begin to intercede on our behalf here on earth so what a wonderful privilege do you know how much God really think of you and your importance he is so precious to you that he has given himself to prayer <laughs> on your behalf. And the second thing we notice is, it, it is also expressed here with groans. The Spirit communicates with God the Father through our desperate great cries and a longing which we are not able to express in words that is when we groan and sometimes we feel pity and a cry you know pity for ourselves we feel self-pity oh nobody understands and nobody cares for me there is nobody to pray for me you know, we feel at times these kind of things in our desperation. But my friends, that is not true. We, we should never feel that way because 
Suppose there is nobody here on earth, no human being, knows your condition and pray, because it is not possible. And suddenly there is a sudden danger and you, 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 you are in deep trouble and there is no one near you to communicate and let the word spread. You are there all alone. But do not despair, my friends. There are two divine intercessors. He and they understand and they know he is a very present help in trouble. Don't you, haven't you read that in God's word? And that means a, a human being cannot be a very present help in our troubles because we may be away or we do not know what is happening. But God is always watching over you, my friends. And I want you to know that this is a special privilege. And so don't feel self-pity. Remember, Jesus is interceding for you at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And here on earth, the Holy Spirit who is in you intercedes for you. And the third thing that we notice here is the Holy Spirit identifies with us to the extent that we, He makes intercession for us according to God's will or our Father's will. Our Father is God. And this requires us to be in the Spirit and to be filled with the Holy Spirit daily. According to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. You know, that's why the Word of God is important for prayer to be effective. And the Holy Spirit is also important for our prayer to be effective. And that's why one needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you need to walk in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit always there to your rescue. But we must go on and go beyond prayer into a higher experience of a being with Jesus. Being with Jesus helped me to do to, to, to these things. Number one, know him. Unless you are being, you be with a person, you cannot know him. The more you are with a person, the more you know him. And then to know God's will. That's why it is important for you to be with Jesus always. Walk with him in the spirit. And thirdly, to love him. And the more you are with a person, the more you know him, how lovable he is, and your love for Jesus will increase. And fourthly, to do his will. The more you know him, the more you love him, it will become a delight for you to do his will. You are only waiting to know what God wants you to do. Here is then your helper, the Holy Spirit, ever want to help you, my friend. Making your prayer life effective. Let me read this to you as I close. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. And the Holy Spirit will bring into your remembrance the saints for whom you need to intercede. And my friends, this is the word of God for us today. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk in the Spirit. God cares for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. And if there are young people listening, I pray for everyone. You know them all. They want to be in your will. They want to be in intimate relationship with you. So that with confidence they can bring their prayer and request to you. Bless your people. Grant to them the sense of your presence and your affection for them. In Jesus name. Thank you. 
and God bless you. Enjoy the day before you by God's grace. Amen.